It's been a few months since I made my first project out of wood, and as the time went by, I realized that woodworking became part of my life. So I dedicated almost a month in designing and building this multi-purpose workbench that will ease my future projects. Today I'm going to show you how I turned my router into a router table, my circular saw into a table saw, and my jigsaw into a bandsaw. Also, I'm going to show you how I collect the dust from these tools. And at last, I'll show you how I connected and wired everything. Along with the complete explanation in this video, I'll give you free plans with all the dimensions and details that will help you build your own multi-purpose workbench. There you can also find some accessories that I plan to make in some of my next videos, like table saw fence, cross-cut sled, miter gauge, feather board, and push stick. These accessories are a must-have for a workbench like this, especially for safety and precision. You can find the free plans in the video description below. So let's get started. For this project, I used two sheets of plywood, 122 by 244 cm, 21 mm thick. First, I marked all the dimensions and prepared the sheets for cutting. I used the wooden strip as a fence and clamped it down and it did, did a really good job. Also, I placed the sheets on the two tables to prevent the wood from splintering. Then I started cutting. I've made all the cuts with the circular saw. It was a bit difficult to make the first cuts due to the size of the sheets, but with a little effort and patience I finished this step successfully. I cut all the pieces that I need for this project the top, the bottom, the sides, the inner panels, the doors and the frame which will go below the top. Now that I have all the pieces cut to size, it is time to start assembling the workbench. I'll start with the bottom and I'll attach the sides to it. To make the sides perpendicular with the bottom, I'm using corner clamps which are very useful for this kind of joints. On the bottom of the table, I'm marking the points where I'll drive the screws in and then I'm drilling some pilot holes in there. After I made the pilot holes, I decided that it is much better to strengthen the joints with the wood glue and then to drive the screws in. I'm using 5 cm long screws with 4 mm diameter. I repeated this process with the other two panels which are parallel with the first one. Before I continue with the rest two vertical sides of the workbench, I'll attach the shelves. To do this, I'll make pocket holes with a pocket hole jig on each shelf. This is the most appropriate way to give the table a cleaner look. When it comes to the shelves, I need to make sure that they are lined up and to check the squaring. I spent some time measuring and clamping them down with corner clamps and then I drove the screws in. I couldn't use the special driver bit which is used for pocket hole screws because the inner space was tight. So I used shorter bit to drive the screws into the pocket holes. For these joints I'm using 4 cm long screws. I repeated this process with the second shelf, but this time I used the longer driver bit because there was enough space for it. As you can see, the shelves are lined up well, so I can move on to attaching the other two panels which are perpendicular with the other panels that are already attached to the bottom of the workbench. I secured them in place with wood glue and corner clamps and then I drove some screws into both sides that touch this panel. I placed the other panel in parallel with the previous one. One more thing I need to do is to attach the last shelf with pocket hole screws as well. Now it is time to pay attention to the top of the table. This is the most important part of the entire workbench because here I'll attach all the tools that I'll use in my next projects. All the measurements need to be accurate and everything needs to be square with the front of the table. You can see that I'm going to make all the cuts and inserts before attaching the top to the sides of the table. The reason why I'm doing this is because it will be much easier to make holes for the caster wheels on the bottom without the top. The first tool that I'm going to attach is the router. I measured the size of the opening, found the center and drew a square on the panel that I need to cut with the jigsaw. Then I drilled out four holes, one in each corner, to pass the jigsaw blade through. These holes will be starting points for the jigsaw. While cutting, you should try to stay as close to the line as possible. 
But if you get out of control, don't worry, because anyway, you'll make new inserts from another plywood board and you'll need to adjust that to the front. I've cut the opening and used the rest to remove all the extra wood that I couldn't cut with the jigsaw. Next I need to make a rivet for the insert that will hold the router from below. I'm drawing the perimeter of the square that I need to cut. It is actually the same size as the insert. I decided to try my new router and remove 1 cm of the surface of the plywood. To follow the line of the perimeter I clamped down a few pieces of scrap wood. I'm using a straight 12mm bit to route this section out, but I set the depth of the cut on 5mm, so I need to pass twice on the same surface to get the 10mm depth. Anyway, I'm very satisfied with how it turned out. Now I need to make the inserts for the tools. The rabbit that I previously made can fit 10mm thick insert. The problem is that I don't have 10mm thick plywood, so I need to find a way to solve this issue. The only reasonable solution was to turn the 21mm plywood board into 10mm board with a router. So I took a plywood board with a size that will match the size of all the three inserts for the tools that I plan to attach to the workbench. And I started removing 11mm off of the plywood. The surface was pretty large and it took me some time until I finished. In the end I was all covered in dust but I finally got a 10mm board, which was one of the most important parts of the project. Before cutting the inserts, I sanded the board down to make it nice and smooth. Then I cut the insert for the router and used the sandpaper to make round edges. It is a perfect fit for the opening. Next I removed the base of the router and I used it as a template to mark the mounting holes. In fact, I marked all the points where I needed to drill holes because I needed to secure the router to the insert and then to secure the insert to the top of the table. Then I drilled the holes out. First I used the counter sink bit to drill out the holes just enough to get the screw heads to sink below the surface of the wood. That's because I need the insert to be flush with the surface of the table. For the router I made holes with a 4mm bit and for the insert I made 6mm holes. Also, I used the 35mm Forstner bit to drill out the center so that I can easily move the router bit up and down. The last four holes I drilled with an 8mm bit into the corners of the rabbit. Now I'm going to install the T-nuts below the surface so that I can secure the insert in place. I'm going to use a clamp which will pull the T-nut inside the wood. And that's it, I'll attach the router onto the insert and then I'll attach the insert onto the table. So the router is pretty much done at this moment. Now I can move on to the second tool and that's the circular saw. The process is similar to the previous one, the difference here is in the opening, which is so much larger. Here I need to pay much more attention to the squaring. The saw has to be squared up with the front edge of the workbench, so I need to measure twice before cutting. Then again, I drilled 4 holes for the jigsaw blade to pass through and make an opening as big as the circular saw. The rasp corrected all the imperfections. Then I made a rabbit with the router and this time I set the depth of the cut on 10mm so that I can remove the extra wood all at once. Fortunately, now I have 10mm thick plywood for this insert. So I cut the insert to size and rounded the edges with the sandpaper. To attach the circular saw to the insert, I'm going to utilize the existing holes, two in the front and two in the back of the saw, I'm just going to use new longer bolts. I removed the original bolts, found the exact location of the saw and marked the places where I'll need to drill holes in the insert. After that, I drilled all the holes I needed. I'm going to use bolts with 4 and 5 mm diameter, two of each, and also I'm going to use 4 bolts with 6mm diameter to attach the insert to the table. I installed the T-nuts with an F-clamp, one in each corner of the opening. You may have to drill new holes in your saw base if you can't use the existing ones. Now I'll place the circular saw below the top and at this point I need to make two cuts, one at a 90 degree angle and another at a 45 degree angle. 
In this position I can turn the circular saw on and make the two cuts through the insert. So I've turned the circular saw into a table saw, which means I'm done with this part of the workbench. Next I can focus on the third tool, and that's the jigsaw. I've made all the measurements for the opening, so I can start cutting. In each corner I drilled four holes and slowly passed the jigsaw through, following the lines. The process is pretty much the same here. Again, all the imperfections are corrected with the rasp. Then I clamp down four pieces of scrap wood and they will act as a guide for the router. I routed the section out with a 12mm bit. This is the insert that I previously made. It is a perfect fit for the opening. After that I need to attach the jigsaw to the insert and to do that I need to drill new holes in my saw base. I placed the jigsaw onto a bunch of scrap wood pieces and secured it with some clamps. Then I marked the points when I'll drill the holes with a screw and a mallet. I drilled two holes in the front and two holes in the back of the jigsaw. To do this I'm using 5mm metal drill bit. Now that I have four holes on the jigsaw, I can make the appropriate holes on the insert and on the opening and to install the T-nuts. Also I made a 15mm hole with a Forstner bit for the jigsaw blade. I used this bit size because most of the blades I have are small enough to fit inside a 15mm hole. I can now attach the jigsaw onto the insert, secure the insert onto the workbench and put the blade in place to check the squaring. You may have a different jigsaw, so you may need to use a different method to attach it to the workbench. Ok, now that I am done with all three tools, I can move on to the caster wheels that I need to attach to the bottom. First, I'll remove the inserts and the top and will lay the table down on the back side so that I have an access to work on the bottom. After I drew some lines, I can mark the points for the screws and drill four holes on each corner. At this point, I'm not going to attach the wheels, instead I'm just going to make the holes so that I can attach them later after I'm done painting. I'm using caster wheels with brakes because this way I can easily move the workbench and I can secure it in place while I'm working. To attach the top to the table, I'm making pocket holes on each side for which I'm going to use 32mm screws. Then I'm applying a decent amount of wood glue because I need the top to be firmly attached. Here I need to pay attention of the squaring of the top with the sides, especially with the front of the table. I'm driving pocket hole screws in each hole. The next step is to mount the frame below the top. I apply wood glue on the first stripe, clamp it down and drive screws from the inside. For the rest three stripes I drive screws from below and it worked just fine. Now it is time to work on the doors. I'll make all the holes I need before painting because I want to get clean and sharp look of the workbench and to avoid imperfections as much as I can. I'm marking the points where I'll place the hinges and I'm making holes using 35mm Forstner bit. The depth of the holes depends on the depth of the hinges, so I need to check how much of the plywood I need to remove. Here I'm marking the points of the screws and then I drill the holes. I'll mount the doors later in the video, but here I'm showing you how opening the door will look like. Before painting, I'm sanding the entire workbench, the doors and the inserts, first with 120 and then with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I wipe the dust off of the plywood and this means that the bench is ready for the next step. I decided to finish it with a combination of stain and paint, so I stained the top, the inserts and the doors with walnut stain and I painted everything else with white paint. I chose to do the top first. I applied one nice coat of walnut stain and wiped it off and I think one coat is enough because the main purpose of the stain is to protect the wood and to give it nice darker color. What I most like about the stain is that it emphasizes the edges of the plywood wonderfully. Then I stained the doors and the inserts. When it comes to the paint, first I applied one coat of oil-based primer left it to dry out and then sanded it with 120 grit sandpaper. After that I applied one coat of white oil based paint and left it to dry for at least 24 hours before doing anything else. After it's completely dry I mount the caster wheels on the bottom with 8mm bolts 
and secure them well. Here you can see that the bottom isn't painted. Instead I applied transparent finish because it dries so fast so I didn't have to wait another 24 hours for more paint to dry out. Now I can move on to the fun part of this project, the electrical work. I'll put three switches in front of the workbench which will control the three power outlets for each tool according to this circuit schematic. I'm using 3-core 1.5mm cable and I start by cutting it to size and stripping off the wires inside. I connected the hot and the neutral lines, in my case the brown and the blue wires, to the switch in a way that they are connected to each other when the switch is pressed and disconnected when the switch is not pressed. I attached the switch boxes to the workbench using screws, inserted the other end of the cables through the holes where my junction box will be located and assembled the switches. On the other side, in the router compartment, I marked the position where the junction box will be placed and attached it to the side panel using two screws. In similar way, I connected the three power outlets with the cables appropriately, attached them in each compartment and assembled them. What's left is to connect the main power to the junction box. I did that by using 3 meters long cable on which I attached the power plug and then brought the cable to the junction box. At the end I connected all the wires together in the junction box according to the circuit schematic. You can find more details in the video description below. As I already said, there is a free plan for this workbench, including the entire process of building and wiring. Once I'm done wiring, I can pay attention to the dust collection. I've previously made these squares with holes in the middle that will fit all the hoses needed for this workbench. They are all a tight fit so that all the dust will be collected without making a mess inside the bench. I screwed one square above and one below the shelf and this way I'll connect the hoses from the tools and the hose from the vacuum cleaner. This was the best solution for dust collection, but in your case doesn't have to be that way. The next step is mounting the doors. The holes are already made, so I just need to screw the hinges in place. I'm using full overlay hinges. Also I made door knobs out of plywood, which I mounted with screws. I kind of like the exposed look of the screws. Mounting the doors on the workbench is easy, you just have to follow one simple rule, which I'll also put in the video description. I like the mechanism of the hinges. They're easy to install and adjustable, which is pretty good for people who are using them for the first time. The doors emphasize the beauty of this workbench additionally. Finally, I can put the tools in place and test them. I'll start with the router. I place it inside the table, connect the hose, plug it in and turn it on. As you can see, it is easily adjustable. You can take the router out in a second, change the bit depending on the work that you need to do and then return it in place. I put the hose from the vacuum cleaner below the shelf and finally try the router. I clamped down a scrap of wood as a guide, turned the switch on and started working with the router. It is so much easier than before. I do the same things with the circular saw. We can notice that instead 4 I put 6 screws to attach the insert to the top. This is because the surface of the insert warped for some reason, which I couldn't fix and I thought 2 more screws in the middle will solve this problem. And I was right. Here I clamp the blade guard handle out of the way, push the trigger switch in and lock it with a plastic zip lock strip. Now I can test my new table saw. I can now move on to the last tool and that's the bandsaw. The process here is pretty much the same. I put the blade in and try to make a curved cut on a piece of plywood. It turned out perfect. So at this point I'm done with my workbench. I'm very satisfied with how it turned out. I really like its appearance and functionality, so I think it was worth every second I've spent on its design and building. Don't forget to check and download the free plan I'm giving to you. It includes all the details you need to build your own multipurpose workbench. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions, suggestions and ideas, leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.